Hi, this is Jack Stanley, and I wanted to talk about the RMS Titanic. I don't want to talk about it like we usually talk about it. It was a disaster. The ship hit an iceberg and it sank. That's not where I want to go with this. I want to talk about the Titanic, in a sense, has become far more unsinkable than we ever dreamed. Because the Titanic, 106 years after it sank, is very much a part of our lives, part of our culture. Um, in the modern age of computers and internet, the Titanic is right smack in the middle there. You know, I've been watching something on YouTube, information about a, a new game, a virtual reality, I believe. It's called Honor and Glory, and, and, and they have this amazing... Uh, mock-up of the Titanic and everything around it. It's truly incredible. But you know, the Titanic has become a metaphor for disaster. Uh, it has become a pop icon for pop culture. And of course, we have, you know, the movie in 1997, Jack and Rose and Jack and Rose. And, and of course, that brought in a whole new generation, just like for myself. I got interested in the Titanic in the 1960s by reading Night to Remember, and then I read uh, Maiden Voyage, and then I read, read Lawrence Beasley's book, and and then Archibald Gracie's, and etc., etc. I read countless books on the Titanic. I was fascinated. And then years later, I got to meet uh, two survivors of the Titanic long, long time ago in the 1970s, uh, one was Edwina McKenzie. She had a great line. Um, talked to her just for a short while. She's a very old lady. And she said, How could I drown? My maiden name was Trout. I thought that was a pretty good line. And the other was Eva Hart. And Eva Hart was a charming lady, and she... She had been a justice of the peace, I believe, and a, even a singer. And, and, and she was seven years old, and she told the most incredible story. And it was really neat to meet these two individuals. And there again, that's 40 years ago I did that. Now, in the modern age, in now, the Titanic is everywhere. If you go back through the 20th century, after the sinking... Uh, there was an actress on board. I think her last name was Gibson. And um, she did a silent picture on the sinking of the Titanic, which is lost. There was a cartoon, an animated film of the sinking of the Titanic. Uh, the film of the Olympic in New York Harbor, which made things a little difficult because the Titanic had never been there. So they scratched out the names of the, uh, the ferry, uh, the uh, tugboats. Uh, so no one could read the names, because if you read them, you'd know they were in New York. And you know, movies were made, and books were written, and stories were written, and careers were made, and careers were destroyed through the Titanic. You know, think of Renee Harris, Change the Total Face of Broadway. You know, the unsinkable Molly Brown, well... She became more famous and more bombastic after the sinking. Um, Archibald Gracie was rushing with death with one hand on the shoulder of Gracie. He finished his writing and he died. It was interesting. Lawrence Beasley was a teacher, an Eng I think a, a science teacher, and he had never been on a ship before, so he observed everything. And so when you read his book, it's fascinating reading. All the other books at that time were crap, for lack of a better word, because it was just nonsense that they wrote up to, to sell books. But the Titanic has been in so many movies. You know, think in the 1920s, there was a Titanic movie uh, in... World War II, the Nazis actually used the Titanic uh, as a storyboard of talking about the arrogance of the British. Interesting thing, the Nazi film was 
pretty accurate. Actually, it was more accurate than a lot of the other films that had been made at that point. But still, there was a message there that was subliminal saying, basically, English suck. You know, <laughs> It was a Nazi movie, so that's what you'd expect. In 1949, there was the movie Titanic with Clifton Webb and um, Barbara Stanwyck. Kind of dramatized, but still quite good. And then in 1958 was the greatest movie, I think, ever made on the RMS Titanic, and that was Night to Remember. Now, many of you have not seen it, and you know something that's interesting? I talk to people of certain ages, and they get frightened when they see a black and white movie. They want to see color. What can I say? But then in 1997, we had the phenomena, the, the movie Titanic, uh, James Cameron's Titanic, Jack and Rose, and Jack and Rose. It was like a tennis match. But the interesting thing was the set was incredible. It was the ship. Of course, the acting was not on par with 1958. And the two kids, Jack and Rose were like two kids from the 1990s on a ship in 1912. And, of course, in the Edwardian age, one of the greatest things to do was to render assistance, especially to a lady. And, you know, in the early part of the movie, you know, um, when she is screaming and running down the deck, going all the way to the poop deck, which took a while, and not a soul. But if you think, in the Edwardian age, if anyone did anything like that, you'd have a proverbial Congo line behind her trying to render assistance. It's four o'clock in the morning. Now, the other thing that's kind of interesting about this is that when the ship was leaving, did you notice they were all waving in 1997? They weren't using hankies. That was the standard operating procedure. Whenever you would go, you'd take a hanky and you'd wave it. Of course, I guess it's from another age and people don't know. Other things that are interesting that make the Titanic so incredibly unsinkable is that it's become part of pop culture. It's become part of the Internet. There's a whole thing called Honor and Glory where they, they do like virtual reality. You're on the ship and it's incredible. Everything around, the grounds, the water, the buildings, the ship. It's, it's, it's remarkable. So the Titanic, in a sense has proved itself so much far more unsinkable than ever dreamed. Now, I didn't come up with that phrase. I borrowed it. Uh, Walter Lord, who wrote Night to Remember, said that many years later, when he came out with another edition, he said that the Titanic has proved to be far more unsinkable than ever dreamed. And indeed, the Titanic is a part of our lives. It is a metaphor for disaster, uh, it will continue through time to make cameo appearances in programs, in computer programs, in stories, in books, and that. And the interesting thing is that 50 years from now, I do believe, <coughs> excuse me, that the Titanic will still be a part of the culture of the world when just about everything else has gone in the junk heap of history, the Titanic will still be sailing in the minds of young people. It's pretty incredible when you think about it. And you know, I wonder, when they conceived the idea of the Titanic, and, and of course, the Titanic was never called totally unsinkable. It was practically unsinkable. But you may say, truly, that in the world, in our age, and I believe in the age of the future as well, the Titanic has proved itself to be far more unsinkable than 
anyone had in their wildest dreams. Thank you.